OK, so here's our third example of predator control with parasitic wasps. These are used to control quite a few different pests like caterpillars, aphids and leaf miners. However, today we're going to concentrate on the simplest and most straightforward example, tackling whitefly. Whitefly is a common pest in greenhouses and sometimes outside. They look like a cloud of tiny, tiny little moths when you disturb a leaf and they fly up into the air. If you look under the leaf, you'll see little semicircles of tiny white dots, which are eggs. And in fact, the females might be actually found egg-laying as they are in the video. We find we get whitefly on our brassicas in the summer, particularly kale. Of course, we're indoors and don't have many birds, and this makes it worse. So to control whitefly, we use a tiny parasitic wasp, which finds its way into the whitefly eggs and puts its own eggs inside, using it as a borrowed nursery. Wasps have rather a bad press. When we suggest using parasitic wasps, people often flinch away. But actually, they're just only called wasps because they belong to the same group of insects which are called Hymenoptera, which include bees and wasps. And these insects have developed a method of stinging other creatures for defence or attack. Some of these beneficial insects sting their prey and then eat them, but many more paralyse them and lay new eggs inside their prey and use the dead body as food for their young, rather like what Incarsia does here. The Incarsia are posted to us and arrive in the form of egg scales stuck to cards. We just hang a few up everywhere there is a problem and the Incarsia get to work parasitising the whitefly. This is a cheap and simple method of control, although it only works if you catch it early enough and you often need a repeat treatment. When they arrive, you can see the scales are very small. This is just a close-up of that card that we were looking at in the last um, picture. And if we zoom in on what the adults themselves look like, they're also very small. As you can see, they're actually just tiny. They're just the same length as that green stripe on the original slide. So, you know, they're quite uh, nice little beasts and uh, they're actually really quite effective against the white fly. So, if you have a problem with that, it's a good way of dealing with it. Thanks for listening. We'll be going on to talk next about um, Cryptolademus, the Australian ladybird, and how they tackle the mealy bug problem.